Alright, hi guys, how you going? Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new, welcome. So today we're going to be doing a bit of work on the Bajero, particular paint careful attention to the roof rack. So what the plan is, there's a few things I'm looking at doing. There's some new high powered lights I've got for the sides of the cars, for night four driving, we've been doing a bit of that lately. If you want to go back to the channel and check out the Cobor um, night four driving, that was a great one, or border track, so found the need for those. I'm also going to be putting, uh, updating the lighting. I had some cheap lighting installed around the roof racks. I've gone and bought um, some new gear. So we'll be installing that as well. So side lights around the sides and the back for my cooking setup. And the roof rack itself, I'm not sure whether or not I'm keeping it or getting rid of it. I've got the fuel roof bars, which the flat rack is actually mounted to. I've got to check those out because they've been a bit uh, dodgy of late. I've noticed they've uh, come loose and, loose and I've got to see whether or not they've actually just snapped or it's the rubbers or uh, another issue is the roof rails. I'm not sure if the roof rails are snapped also. We've been doing a lot of uh, hardcore four-wheel driving up uh, Central Australia and want to suss that out and see what condition they're in. And then also I'm looking at mounting a permanent 200 watt solar panel to the roof. Uh, and then we'll want to suss out the awning setup. So I've got a King's um, awning again on the left hand side of the car, which extends out three meters. And then again, I'm finding that I'm needing an awning more so around the back. So whether or not I go for a separate awning there or the full 360. So yeah, so there's quite a lot to cover. We'll probably break this up into a series of videos and we'll go from there. All right, let's get started. All right guys, so as I mentioned earlier, again, I've lost these caps, uh, which is no big deal, but the fuel, the roof rack itself, <laughs> that's come loose. And we'll go for a bit of a walk around the car. This one here. So this one is solid on the roof rack, but there's a bit of movement here. So we'll suss it out. That one's actually not too bad. Then on this side, again, there's a lot of movement there. And on this side, <laughs> massive amounts of movement. <laughs> and then you can see the roof rack there. And you can see just under there, a little bit of rust appearing there. So that was a hole with a lug in it, but it looks like it's all been rusted out. So if you look, if you look at the opposite side, you can see that it's got the rubber grommet in there. So this side's fine, but that side's uh, definitely uh, copped it. And then this is the look from above. So I've had this roof rack on here for over, I reckon 12 years now, and it's been absolutely fantastic. It's done a great job for me and extremely happy with it. So, but now I've got to work out how I'm going to mount this solar panel. I can't have the, anything go above the current height of the roof rack because I work in the city and that's the maximum height is at two meters. So I can't exceed it any higher. I'm thinking about actually cutting out that middle section and then actually mounting it to the bars underneath. At the end of the day, you, it's all, the panels are almost pretty useless if you were always to mount it actually under that grate system. So the plan is to probably chop it out. We'll see whether or not it even goes entirely. But if I want to maintain some sort of awning, then the roof rack probably has to stay in part. And I do use it a lot for stuff around the house. Um, big sheet supply or mower mine. Uh, long lengths of timber. So I'm not probably prepared to get rid of it just yet, but we'll see. And then I need somewhere to mount the side lights. And then this is the shitty lighting that I had. Uh, again, actually works really well and does the job. Doesn't look very professional, <laughs> but um, it works really well. So, and that just sort of pops in the back there. And then I've got a couple underneath on this side. So, and then if I want to do the 270 degree awning, not 360, <laughs> I need to make sure that I don't go above the height of the rack. And then obviously I can still open the doors. 
because obviously the, the unit is a lot bigger than this. So that's another issue. But I've noticed I'm looking at the King's 271 and it has these special brackets which are, they seem to be very adjustable. So they might, it might just work out. All right, I think we need to start pulling off this rack, pull everything apart and we'll go from there. All right guys, so straight off the bat, just so you can see what we're dealing with here with this particular setup and roof rack. So I've got this, I've got these roof bars on top of my roof rails and then I've got a flat rack fixed to the roof bars. And you can see there with the King's currently, the current King's awning, it's actually mounted underneath the um, flat rack. And that's what I'm planning to do uh, with the new one. Now, as you can see here, currently it does not protrude past the top of the flat rack, which is perfect. And I wanna make sure that the new one does exactly the same thing. But then the issue you have is obviously you need to be able to open the doors and the new King's awning is about 200 mil from top to bottom. So the plan is hopefully, and I've measured that it should be fine, that you will be able to still open the doors quite easily. So, good old Melbourne weather. She's pissing down rain, hence we're in the garage today. And I'll just give you a view from the front. So, yeah, so that's the plan. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of clearance above the doors, but it should be fine. Hopefully, that's the plan. Shout out to Jared. He's a big uh, advocate of King's. So uh, yeah, he was, I think he was keen to see this one because he was uh, keen to see some of the new King's branding on his car. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so we've just removed the existing King's awning. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, it was just basically three brackets bolted from underneath the actual flat roof rack. You can see here, uh, these are the original brackets that um, came off. Now, surprisingly, they're actually in pretty good nick for, you know, you know almost um, 12 to 15 years old. Sold as, they didn't deform in any way. Again, a little bit of surface rust. And the actual roof rack itself was attached to the bar with these U-bolts. And would you believe after all of this time and all of that driving, they did not budge or move in any way, shape or form. Now, the awning is actually in really good condition. So there's no issues with it whatsoever, but because I've got the kitchen coming out the back now, I really need an awning that's going to accommodate me around the back in particular. So I'll end off uh, gifting this to one of my mates and he can pop it on uh, his four wheel drive or even gift it to his son. Now we've basically disconnected all the roof rack from the actual roof bars. That's what the U-bolts were for. So we'll take that off. But you can see one of the problems I had was with this Thule bar. Now, from what I recall what happened originally, some bastard tried to actually pinch my roof rack. And they had attempted to unscrew, because I didn't have them locked, they attempted to unscrew the actual bars. But because I actually had the King's awning on this side, they couldn't get it out all the way. And... I don't think, to be, to be truthful, I don't think I actually screwed them back on properly. Hence, there was a bit of play on this side of the roof rack in particular. So, I'm sure once I get it all pulled apart and put back together, um, they should function quite nicely. As you can see there, um, these particular roof rails, there was a screw underneath that had to be tightened. And again, that's just, you know, 15 years of corrugations and off-roading and so forth so um, we'll get them tightened up they were a little bit difficult to get to get to all right guys so while i'm on the roof so obviously this is a, a pajero gen 4 so with these roof rails i just wanted to show you so there's two nuts that go into the roof so obviously these haven't been tightened up in <laughs> um, about 15 years so it's just 10 mil so just again, I've already tightened them up, but 
just give them a bit of a, a tighten up. Don't go too hard you, or you'll, um, you'll ruin the thread. Now, underneath the rail just here, and I'll show you a close up of it, there's these special screws. I'm not sure, I can't recall what they're called, but um, this is the screw that you need to get them out. And this one in particular is a T25, okay? And literally, because it's so tight, you've got to pop that in underneath. You've got to use a shifter, pop it into a shifter, and then tighten it like this. So obviously these screws are put in before the whole rail is put in. So, and then there's a midpoint as well. And with that midpoint, to get to the screws for the midpoint, you've got to remove the roof lining, and they are actually bolted from underneath, okay? So obviously I'm checking the whole roof racking system. So two bolts front, two bolts rear, a screw here, screw at the front, and then the main screw bolts in the middle from under the roof. All right, so I've tightened them all up. And again, with these things here, these covers, literally, <laughs> they just hop on. Okay. There's a little, it clips in under here, a little slide, okay? Catches on just here. So you gotta slide it in from there, and then it slides in under top, okay? So just make sure that's it. Line them up. And that's it. Make sure that's all flush. Um, and that actually happens to be where my actual um, roof rack rips on. And the two in the front, so it's obviously the same either side, very similar in the front, but the ones in the front, um, I've lost. <laughs> They've popped off. So, yeah, I'll try and get some new ones. Another thing I wanted to point out while I was up here is this surface rough, rust on the roof. Okay? And is that a fault of Pajero? No. That's a fault of myself. Uh, again, I was drilling holes into the roof rack and you had the schwarf come off from the drill holes and I didn't clean it up. And yes, look what's happened. A bit of surface rust. So yeah, be very careful with metal filings on your roof. Uh, make sure you clean them up or else that's what's gonna happen. All right, I thought while well, I'm up here too, I'll give it a nice good clean. Um, it hasn't been cleaned in 15 years. <laughs> so yeah. And then we'll um, finish popping everything back together uh, we'll give these a check out next, pop these back on properly, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, so in order to accommodate this uh, solar panel, <laughs> we're taking the grinder to this roof rack. A few of you might freak out, but there's method in my madness. So the solar panel in particular, the King's one, is 156.7 centimetres long by 70 centimetres wide. And we want to mount this into the middle of this panel to be able to actually still use it. <coughs> so, off comes this section. And this section. And that bar. And that bar. And that bar. And that bar. So that's what it's going to look like with the solar panel in the middle. Now, I'd show you exactly right now what the solar panel looks like inside it, but it's on order <laughs> and it's a couple of weeks behind. But this is exactly what it's going to look like. Now, what's happening is with my roof rack, and I'll pick this up, shake out some of the rust. <laughs> I'll put it like this. So, she's still solid as a rock. Now, reason I'm lucky is that with the construction of this panel, I've got these two sections of tubing, which run front to back. Most roof racks only have a section on either end, and then there's probably a couple of sections in the middle, but I don't have that, so I'm fine. So, and then I mount this to my roof bars. And there's actually specific mounting brackets underneath here, which mount the bracket to the bars. And then what's gonna happen is that the actual solar panel is gonna sit below the top of this, 
and above the bottom of this because it's only, I think it's under two centimeters thick. So that's the plan. And then I can still basically put big sheets of ply on top, no worries. Um, I can still put lengths of timber along both sides and secure that. I can still put stuff lengthways over here and over here. And the, the panel itself is supposed to be quite solid and strong. Not that I would want to put anything on it. And then this still allows me to then mount the awning to this as well. And then mount all of this onto the Bajero. So that's the plan. Let's see how it comes together. Amongst mounting a few other things, lights and whatnot. So, all right. So this now I'm going to mount it back onto the Bajero. And then when the solar panel comes, I'll show you the next steps um, and what she's going to look like. So, but looking good. Uh, and these ends here, you'll see what I'm going to do with these. So if I don't utilize them for the mounting of the solar panel, I'll um, just get some ends and block these up. So no big deal. All right, next step. All right, guys, so these are the new, the new Kings Plus adjustable heavy duty powder coated steel brackets. So the original ones that came with the awning were a little bit inflexible. So they come out with these new brackets, which are supposed to be a lot better. And for my purposes, because of the way I want to mount it, definitely a lot better. Again, we've got the gussets. Now I've found out since after speaking to a few people, there's a bit of a flaw with these you actually need to drill another hole in the gusset here because what's happening is the because the, the the actual awning is only um, basically fixed at one point what happens is that actual awning can flip um, you'll see what i mean when i put it up but basically you've just got to drill an additional hole in so no big deal so you got your brackets Um, so it comes with all your screws and your little bits and pieces, so you're, you're covered with absolutely everything. Now these brackets are a little bit different to the original King's awning brackets. The original King's awning brackets actually had three separate brackets, um, which they were very inflexible, very strong but very inflexible. Whereas these ones, now you only need two brackets. So the way this works is, what will happen is, that will get mounted. That's what the back of the um, awning gets mounted to. And then what, what's gonna happen is you've got this gusset, which will pull into here, depending on the position. So if you've got that there, you can either have it in that position there or that position there, okay? Um, and then what's gonna happen is you've got this piece here, which then goes here and gets fixed with the gusset. And yeah, so that's basically it. All right, and which is exactly what I need for my, what I'm trying to do. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. Next step. Okay, so I've just shown you the brackets. So this is what they look like assembled. So obviously there's two of them. Uh, in the original unit, when you bought the awning, there was a set of brackets that came with it. But with this current one, this is the latest model, the Kings Plus one. Uh, no brackets come with it, and these are the brackets you need to purchase additional. Again, as per the original one, there was three. Now there's only two, so they've redesigned it. And again, mate, they're hardcore, heavy duty. <laughs> That's going to take a lot of load. But obviously, just make sure you mount it properly to your roof rack. So this is the section that gets mounted to your roof rack. Uh, this is the section that gets mounted to the back of the awning. Now, this can be mounted this way. It can be mounted this way. Um, the position of these um, gussets in the bracket can be at the very top, can be here, can be down here, whichever way you need to. Now, in my instance, with my um, awning and my roof rack set up, I'm limited in that I work in the city and I go into a lot of undercar garages and pretty much two, 2.1 is my absolute max limit. So whatever the top flush for the roof rack is pretty much my limit. So I'm gonna make sure that this, the top of this, hopefully does not exceed the roof rack. So hence I'm mounting my awning off to the side, but below the top level. All right, 
Now, as I mentioned previously, with this, if this is fixed in this position, right, it's bolted here. Once you put weight on this, this is actually going to fall forward, okay? So we need to drill an additional hole in here, and it's going to end up going through three layers of steel, so be prepared for that, um, on both sides, okay, to give it the strength it needs. If it was mounted in that position, and it's bolted at the top, it's a different story. The downward pressure is going to force that against that, but I would still pop in the additional bolt. Because I'm actually mounting it to some round tubing, I've got these little U-clamps, okay? Just, they come galvanised, I've just spray painted them black. So I'm going to be using four of these on each bracket, okay? You want to bolt it to as multiple places as possible. In particular, this awning weighs about, about 27 kilo, and there's a lot of pressure on its pivot point, okay? At this end here. So you want to make sure that it's fixed at as multiple points as possible. You don't want too much pressure in the one area. Okay, so that's for me. So that's that. Yeah, so I'm going to screw these holes first and then I'll show you the awning. Okay. And then also, sorry. And then also, when you assemble and do these bolts up, use a set square, pop it in, just to get make sure you get this at the right angle. Okay. Unless you want specifically a bit of angle into it. But again, I prefer it at the right angle. All right, guys. So we'll just quickly unbox, which is pretty straightforward. Just pay careful attention to the model number and obviously the size of it. Don't be shocked because it's quite a big unit. I didn't expect it to actually be this long, but it is. <laughs> so now I can see this box was open previously, so hopefully there's no issues with it. So there you go. All looks good, other than a bit dusty. Just have a quick look. Yep. There was a few, I saw a few guys complaining about leaking. So whether or not that's to do with whether they didn't install it properly or the stitching and the, the seams were a little bit dodge. Uh, but that was probably the earlier model. So I haven't seen one, um, a review up there of the, actually the King's Plus one. So we'll see what the go is with this. All right, so we're gonna take it out of the bag. Zips run nice. Okay. Okay. Ah, instructions. <laughs> Again, I've been online to have a look, but um, oh, there's a bit of a, a fabric patch with a bit of cardboard to protect the end. So we're just going to move that. Okay. Now, the bag is actually strapped to the awning, so you need to undo that strap. Okay. And then. There is another, yes, another Velcro strip at the back. Same deal here. Undo this strap, so be careful. Tip it over. Take the end off. Undo, there's one, two, another two Velcro straps. Okay. take this off and set it aside. Now what I'll do is I'll flip it around and show you the back. And she's pretty bloody heavy. Alright, so, so this is where one bracket needs to be. 
okay and obviously that's the pivot point so anywhere in this area should be fine you won't know exactly i suppose until you get it on the roof rack and then open it up to see where you want the overhang over your rear door and then depending on how much roof rack you've got again i think it's going to end up you know over here somewhere so we'll see how we go all right now with this too so in my instance that the roof rack's going to be on top of this okay so then based on that i want Yeah, so I've got plenty of play to put this into any position. I think we'll get it up there, eyeball it, and see what the deal is. All right. And then we've got our other bolts through the hole. Slide them on. So two per track. And you'll notice that with the bolts, there's some shorter ones and longer ones. You use the shorter ones to make the bracket and then use the longer ones in this. Okay. There you go. Now, we're doing this, because what we're going to do is we're going to test fit it without the bag. Get everything lined up. Because then we need to pierce holes into the back of the bag at exactly the right place. So we're trying to do it in that random position. We'll make sure that the other side um, is roughly in the right position. Um, and then we're going to go pop it up and see how it looks and get it positioned right and line everything up. All right, guys. So this is that extra bolt I was talking about. So we'll put one on this side, one on this side. Now, I won't tell you how much trouble I had drilling this damn hole. I went through so many drill bits. I did it on the drill press and, yeah. I ended up having to uh, have it sent off to a friend to do so but yeah so that's the whole reason I needed that because I'm mounting this in this position okay and if I didn't have that bolt there this would fold forward so I needed that there to complete it because this bracket is designed to actually sit on top of the roof rack like so whereas I don't want it on top so the idea is for that to happen based on that it's almost flush with the top of my roof rack which is what I'm after and then what I also had to do was I had to modify this bracket and chop it down a fraction okay don't freak out it's plenty strong enough so um yeah. All right, cool. Let's go. All right, guys. So in addition to those other holes in the sides, I've just popped these two new holes here, and this is just custom for my roof rack. Okay. Depending on the, how the how the configuration of your roof rack will determine what modifications and changes you make to the bracket. So I'll show you how it all looks now. All right, guys. So brackets are all fully mounted, and I stress. This is what works for my setup and my roof rack. So as you can see here, and I'll give you a shot from above, I've got these two U-bolts and then these U-bolts fixed to these two bars. It is like rock solid as. It's as close as possible to the mounting point here for strength. The only thing I would probably redo is I should have cut down the bolts just to make it easy to, to tighten up the, the nuts. So that made it a bit of a, a pain, but we got it done. So that, that looks really, really good. It's solid as, and uh, yeah, extremely happy with it. Okay, so that's that one. I'll give you a closer look at the other one. So as you can see here, 
same sort of setup same deal it just so works out that the position of this was to the left and the main reason was the end of the awning this can be no more than 800 so that falls within that range okay all right so you can see with this one here same sort of deal u-bolts both front and back fixed as close as possible to this main bar and then this mounting bracket and from under underneath you can see that we've actually cut down the u-bolts on this side which made it super easy because we could get the ratchet on them otherwise the other one had to be done by with a, a ring spanner and by finger it was an absolute pain in the ass okay but she's absolutely rock solid super super happy and what makes this easier is because i actually chopped the top of these when you put the bolts on the back of the awning for fitting it's really easy because you just literally lift it up um, you have the nuts on it already and just look, literally hook it on there and it makes it super super easy so super happy on how this all came out and now i'll show you the next step all right now what you have to do next is where this awning was sitting on the brackets in place on your car and you're happy with the position you need to get a pencil and mark the exact positions of where the bolts are on the awning so they match up with the roof and then what you need to do is you need to pop the bolts on and actually tighten them up in place and then what i did the brackets come with this so i use this as a bit of a spacer just to make sure that they're in the exact position so that's those ones and then same here we mark the positions here tighten them up and then what we'll do is we'll do just a quick test fit and we'll lift up the awning and just make sure it actually lines up with these brackets up here because uh, they need to pretty much line up pretty spot on all right so we've done the test fit these are all now bolted on everything lines up perfectly with the brackets on the roof now we're going to put the bag on um, and then pierce the holes through the back of the bag all right guys so we've put the bag back on so what we tried to make sure was that the top of the stitching lines up with the top of the frame here okay and i can feel the bolts here so we're now going to have to put holes there and then same over this side make sure that that lines up roughly with the top of the stitching and then i can feel the bolts here so we need to make the protrusions all right guys so that was pretty easy so what we ended up doing was just doing a little straight incision just one vertical incision so it was nice and tight on each spot we did the top two first stretched it in place and then did the bottom two and literally the incision was maybe about eight mil and then we just pushed it all the way straight over okay so i'm over here now we're going to take the bag off and take the bolts off put a washer at the back pop the bag back on put another washer on put the top two bolts on and then lift it back into place so that's the plan all right so guys just be mindful when you put the bag out you've got these little straps there's three sets of them which end up having to pop back onto the back of the awning okay so there's one there there's another one over here okay and another one just at the end here okay all right guys so we've now popped them through so as you can see now they might not be exactly in the right position but it doesn't matter they'll all line up perfectly once you get, get it up on the roof rack so now what we're going to do is the way i've designed mine because i've cut the top of the brackets like i explained earlier is we're going to put the lock nuts on the top two on both ends okay and then and then we'll be able to lift the entire thing up in place now we won't tighten it off yet because we've still got to put some basically a bit of silicon just to just to seal this properly and then we're going to put another washer and with the actual brackets come these for mounting to your roof racks now i didn't need them in my instance so what i'm going to do is another bit of reinforcement i'm going to pop these on the top as well so you actually get um, four of these so that's my plan i won't need it on the bottom but i definitely will need it at the top just because i've cut the tops of the brackets okay and then the silicon i'm just using a bit of sicker flicks 
marine adhesive was 15 bucks from Bunnings. So, yeah, again, any sort of decent silicone, you'll be fine. All right, cool. All right, guys, so this is what it looks like. So we've basically got this on there, got the washers, got the lock nuts, and then we're gonna basically slide it over the tops of the brackets, and that should make it super easy. All right, so we're gonna lift this up to the brackets so they're on the roof, and there's two little slots that these, this needs to slide into, okay? So literally, we want the bracket to slide in behind this. All right, that's it. I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, man. Love you. Love you. Don't forget the dishes and the what dishwasher, okay? All right, guys, so that's it. It was that simple. <laughs> so now what we'll do is we'll tighten off the top nut, okay? We'll just open up the awning, make sure it all works. We'll make sure all the straps in the back are all put in properly. And then we can tighten off the bottom nuts. Okay, pop the silicon in, make sure everything's all good. Let's go. All right guys, so you can see we've got everything in place. We've got a washer behind, we've got the bracket, washer, nut. We've popped in the silicon behind. We've done the same for underneath. And now we'll just tighten it up. Now, as you can see, I put quite a bit of silicon in there just to seal up the top nicely, okay? And what I'll probably end up doing, I might let that set as is, and then I might put a bead across the top, a bead there, a bead there. So if there is any water, there's almost no chance that it will actually pop in through here. This covers up the slots, so that there's nothing gonna happen there. And that'll protect the top holes totally. And now we just basically set and repeat at both ends, um, top and bottom. All right, cool. And that's the hardest part done. And then we'll crack her open and see what she looks like. All right, guys, and this was another big thing for me. I had to make sure you could bloody open the doors. So as you can see, all of the doors open without an issue. No concerns whatsoever. So that was a concern, but there you go. But again, every car is different. Just make sure you ch sort of check it all out. All right, guys, now for the big unveil. Let's hope it's all come together quite well. But yeah, she looks quite nice, tucked in quite, ni ni quite nicely. Now, obviously, depending on your car, whether you have it set back more or not, for me, that absolutely works perfectly for coverage in the back. It doesn't protrude past the mirrors. Okay, on my instance, the bracket's in the right place. It's no more than more than 800 mil from the end. Again, there's quite a few different awnings. There's the King's 180 Extreme one, which when it opens out, it opens out all the way up here. But the thing is, the mounting point for the awning is literally here. It's, I think, two or 300 mil from the end. And in my instance, my roof rack wouldn't be long enough. So you're going to get sagged. So if you do get that 180 awning, the extreme one, be mindful, you need quite a long rack. So be careful about that. All right, so let's crack her open. Again, you peel, make sure you peel it over the top. Make sure you peel that back so the bracket's exposed. Strap. 
that. Okay. And literally just pull it out. You just hook it on the other, this end, pull it firm, and that's it. <laughs> Mate, that's pretty special. That is absolutely mint. How easy was that? Now, in my instance, I wanted this set quite low. For some people, they might be saying, oh, it's, she's bloody low. Well. That was the compromise I had to make. At the end of the day, I drive into car parks in the city with low heights. My car is about two meters. I couldn't exceed that limit because that's pretty much ticks a lot of boxes for car parks in the city. So I'm more than happy with this slightly lower height. If you wanted to see the above your roof rack, then go for it. That's where I wanted it and that's what works for me. Okay. Other big thing was obviously I've got the kitchen set up here. So what was important for me is that when I pull my kitchen out, okay, and I start assembling sort of all the, the little bits and pieces that I wanted to make sure that basically I had plenty of coverage in the kitchen sort of when I was cooking. So if there is a bit of weather, I'm fine. There are actually walls for this as well, which Again, they're a bit expensive. I'm not probably so keen on getting the walls, but when me and the boys go out, I'm the one that does all the cooking for everyone. So having those walls handy would be probably good if there was a bit of bad weather, because I could put up just, you know, a couple of walls. If it was really bad, I could complete the rest of it. And we could still sit, sort of sit um, everyone under here. And just for shade, like we do a lot of stuff out Central Australia. Again, go, go check the channel. Uh, we recently just did Border Track. We did Cooper Pedy last year, Marla, Flinders Ranges. We've got a big trip planning, planned coming up next year. We're doing the Ann Beetle Highway. So we're driving all the way up to Lavington w WA, cutting straight across Central Australia over about probably eight to 10 days. That'll be a good one. And then probably heading up to Uluru, time permitting. Having shade out in the middle of nowhere is essential. She's a little bit blowy today, but no, nah, she's fine. Again, mate, she's solid as. The design's really great, and this mechanism's magic. One of the big things for me too was to make sure that this covered this quite nicely, so no rain would come in through here, uh, and that works really well. Obviously, if there's any weather gonna come in from behind, it's just gonna roll down here, which is really good. Oh, and again, don't forget too, when you do install this, Make sure you put those Velcro straps back on one there, one there, one there. Okay, do have these strap down points. It comes with a couple of straps. So if you needed to put a bit of a gully into it or just simply for high wind, you can strap down those areas there, those corners. So it did come with, which I forgot to mention, did come with this little bag. And then what comes in this bag is you've got, uh, again, straps, four sets of straps, uh, and then four really heavy duty pegs, maybe a little bit on the short side, but um, yeah, that should do the job. So, and these were tucked away actually in the bag at the end. Uh, I'm not gonna try and squeeze them back in. They're in a nice little neat bag. I'll just throw them in the full drive. Nah, she's absolutely brilliant. And as long as your roof rack's set up properly, it's quite a sort of easy install, but please think it through because there is a lot of weight on this pivot point here. So make sure your roof rack can take it. And again, don't do anything stupid setting this up in bloody high winds and expect it's not gonna fly away or do some damage. But mate, like, she is pretty rock solid. I've seen some guys bloody hang off it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm a few little kilos extra. <laughs> yeah, no, love it. So, so this is probably, this is one of the, the mods I'm making to my roof rack at the moment. The other ones are, you can see just down the ends there, I've got the King's 200 watt solar panel. I'm about to do that next. If you wanna go check that out, go check that out on the channel. I've got a, a unique take on basically 
how I'm sort of fitting it to be able to still utilize my roof rack. So I've got that going in. I've got some more King's lights, which I'm about to install at the front. We did a bit of nightfall driving a few weeks back. We did bore the track, hoe bore, and I needed some side lights. So I'm gonna be mounting these off the, off the front of the roof racks, just to give me a bit of um, a view out the side, probably out the back as well. I just grabbed, uh, just got me King's sand flag. I've got to install that. And just got some new King's lighting. So what I'm gonna do is pop some lighting um, on these bars and just have it set up there permanently and then wire it all into the King's panel. So, uh, and again, I've got the King's panel in my setup with me 25 to 25 DC charger. Um, I've got the inverter and so forth. And again, go to the channel, check it out. It's all covered off there. So, you know, and that sort of almost completes my setup for, for everything now. I mean, for now, <laughs> there's always something going on. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and found that really useful. Please like, subscribe, uh, and share around. You know, the King's community, the full drive community. And again, I'm a big advocate of the King's products because they've just never let me down. So, but again, each to their own, you know. If you want to go Red Arc, you want to go this, you want to go that, absolutely, you know. All right, I'll um, see you on YouTube or I might see you out on the road.